this meeting to order. Uh, this is the Board of Trustees agenda work session, February 22nd, 2022. The time is 6.06 .06 p.m. Uh, we're all present here, so I'd like uh, to call everyone to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. So uh, we will uh, begin our meeting with uh, the board presentation because this is the uh, work session. We do not have public comment uh, this evening. Now, we have our uh, financial statements for the fiscal year end uh, May 31st, 2021, presented by PFK O'Connor Davies, LLP. So either Charlene, I can turn this over to you or to our auditors. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, so we have finished um, the audit process. Uh, the auditors, uh, our new audit firm, PFK O'Connor Davies, will be the partner, Jeff Devoli, and the audit manager, Jennifer Clark, will be um, uh, presenting the financials and discussing them a bit. Um, we are still waiting on the final issue of the Justice Court um, as uh, there was a, uh, a letter that needed to be, uh, you know, some, so we have one, one, one item that has to be tidied up for Justice Court, but that should be issued in the next meeting. So um, I would like to see if Kat can, can you please bring uh, Mr. Jeff Devoli and Jen Clark into Zoom? They are on their way over as you spoke. Okay, and number two, there we are. Hi, Jennifer, if you could put on your camera and your sound. I'll send you a, an unmute, will that help? There you Thank go. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, everybody. My name is Jeff Devoli. I'm the lead partner for PKF O'Connor Davies, the village's auditors. Um, and I'd like to state for the record that I've seen Councilor Gray's chicken dance, and it's no prettier in, in, <laughs> oh my in, gosh. in the flesh than it is on, on video. <laughs> um, as, um, as was thanks, 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 Jeff. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Um, I, I also introduced uh, previously my uh, manager, Jennifer Clark, who has uh, saved my professional life on a couple occasions. <laughs> so if it's okay, will I be able to share my screen? Absolutely. Okay. If you need, okay, good. Okay, does everybody see that? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. Let me just get my camera back here. Okay, <clears throat> uh, so this is the, um, I'm gonna go kind of quickly through this um, and you, you can stop me um, as I um, as I get too fast, but I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm sure you have a pretty busy agenda today. So I'll, uh, I'm gonna just hit some highlights. So here's just a quick agenda for from my presentation, audit status, which is done, of course. Um, we're gonna go through some of our responsibilities as your auditors some of your responsibilities as management and those charged with governments. Uh, we'll go through quickly some audit scope and approach, some financial statement highlights, and some communications. Uh, <clears throat> significant audit areas addressed. Um, the work is done. We, we completed the work. We met with uh, the audit committee on two separate occasions on February 8th and February 18th. Um, and they have uh, reviewed the statements as you have and um, have given um, their, their clearance on issuance. So um, we're, we're ready to go on the issuance. The, um, the opinion is unmodified as it relates to most of the opining units. There is one qualified opinion on the justice court, which we'll get into in a little bit. This is just some of our responsibilities. We're planning and performing the audit in accordance with the professional standards to make sure that the financial statements that we're expressing opinion on are in accordance with US government gap. We consider uh, internal control for purposes of our uh, testing, but we do not express an opinion on the internal control. We accumulate misstatements that we identify in the audit and uh, we conduct our audit with, uh, with professional skepticism and we always take a fresh look and we evaluate the presentation of the financial information. 
um, these this is some communications that uh, we're required to have. Uh, we have um, um, significant deficiencies which are displayed in this presentation. Um, and I'm happy to report there is no fraud or illegal acts that we came across. Um, and we also look at the process that management uses to formulate sensitive um, estimates that are included in the financial statements. Some of your responsibilities as management, make sure the accounting policies are um, appropriate, make sure that the presentation of the financial statements is US government gap, maintaining and um, establishing effective internal control over financial reporting, making sure that the village is uh, in compliance with laws, regulations, provisions of contracts and grant agreements, and making sure that all financial records um, are re uh, related to the audit are presented to us, which they were. Um, those charged with governments communicating with us as auditors and overseeing the financial process. And of course, everybody's responsibility is to set the proper tone at the top and maintain and encourage um, honesty and ethical standards and designing and implementing policies and internal controls to prevent and detect the fraud. This is just some of our audit scope and approach. We look at significant areas, cash, revenue receivables, accounts payable, expenditures, and other liabilities, fund balance, payroll, because of the size, um, equity and, and financial statement reconciliations. And the, um, we also perform a, a test under gas or government auditing standards uh, to make sure that uh, you're in compliance with all laws and, and regulations as it relates to financial statements. This year, there was um, an implementation of a new GASB, GASB Statement 84, which had to do with, um, with trust and agency and moving some liabilities and cash um, that was previously in trust and agency to the operating funds uh, while maintaining some of them still in the custodial fund. You'll see in our opinion that there is a, an emphasis, a matter paragraph pointing out that this new standard was adopted by the village this year. A couple of uh, financial statement highlights, government-wide financial statements, which we know are full accrual statements, increase in net position by $1.1 million. Overall net position was a deficit of $43.6 million in the governmental activities. Um, and uh, the uh, investment in capital assets of $27.8 million, restricted net position, which are predominantly your um, GML reserves, of 8.4 and an overall unrestricted net deficit of just under $80 million. You can stop me anytime if anybody has any questions. Uh, so this is the governmental funds balance sheet. So this is on the modified accrual of current financial resource basis. General fund had an increase in fund balance of $1.2 million or 7% capital projects, which we know are multi-year funds increased by 157, $4.3 million. And the special revenue fund increased by 136% or $466,000. So across all funds in the village, there was roughly about a $6 million increase or 29% increase in fund balances. On the right-hand side is the fund balance by type. Well, fund balances are broken down into various categories, uh, non-spendable, which are uh, prepaid items. Restrictions, as I said, was 8.4, which were um, general uh, municipal or reserves. Assigned fund balance, which is fund balance in the capital projects fund and um, encumbrances in the general fund, 7.7. .7. And unassigned or free fund balance of $9.8 million. That's all in the, in the general fund. Some budgetary highlights, revenues uh, were better than budget by 3.6 million and expenditures were better than budget by $1.5 million. So across um, the revenues and expenditures for the general fund, there was uh, about a $5.1 million um, better than budget um, um, actual versus the budget. Um, unassigned fund balance, as I said, was $9.8 million in the general fund. Uh, we generally, what we do is we um, calculate that as a percentage of the ensuing year's operating expenses for 2022, and it represents about 30.4%. So we consider that um, not as not part of the, the audit, but just an offline 
comment to you is that is a pretty healthy level of fund balance. Less than 10% would be something that you should be concerned about. And um, you know, anywhere from 20 to 30% represents roughly a quarter of the year's expenses that um, are in the bank, in the, in, the, in the fund balance bank, if you will, um, to pay the next year's expenses without receiving a dime more in revenue. Jeff, can I interrupt yeah. for a second? Certainly. I don't know how many school districts you represent, but can you explain the difference between uh, the restrictions on a school district versus a village with respect to the reserves? Because I know a lot of people read in the paper that a lot of school districts are in violation of the amount that they're allowed to have in their reserves. Yes. Yeah, so, so school districts are, are subject to some different rules. Um, as Mr. Gray is saying, school districts, they're, um, they have a, a, a cap on unrestricted fund balance of 4%. They can't have more than 4% in um, fund balance. So um, what they're then required to do was to create a budget that operates more narrowly than a village does. Um, and what they generally do is they establish reserves. And you, you know sometimes you'll see the state controller um, um, criticizing school districts for building up too much money in their reserves. And in the village, um, you, you can accumulate as much fund balance as, as the village board requires necessary for either future um, projects and, and, and transfers and other um, operating expenses or rainy day funds in uh, reserves. Thank, thank you for explaining that, that difference um, legally, you know, between yes. school districts and villages. Thank you, Mr. Devoli. Appreciate it. You're that. welcome. You're welcome. Um, there's some some uh, new GASBs on the horizon. Um, if, if I go through these in detail, you probably won't invite me back. So I'll just uh, tell you that um, what what the biggest one that's coming down the down the pike is GASB 87, which has to do with leases and um, conduit debt, which has to do with more IDAs. Um, then, of course, there's always an omnibus catch-all in 92. Um, everybody knows GASB 93 is, um, is a replacement of LIBOR. Um, and then there's some stuff coming down the pike further down with public and private and public and public partnerships. And we'll see um, more of that as these ARPA funds roll out um, and the um, ability to share these, um, these ARPA funds um, with um, public and private partnerships. And then there's another one coming down regarding subscription-based uh, technology. Uh, so what, one of the things that we're required to do is, is to is to communicate with you our responsibilities under professional standards. And we do that generally through the engagement letter. That engagement was received by us on July 27, 2021. And then there's just a couple more things regarding qualitative aspects of accounting practices broken into various categories. One is accounting policies. And we're happy to say that no matters have come to our attention that require us to inform you about the effects of accounting policies in controversial or emergent areas where there's a lack of authoritative guidance. Another area is significant and unusual transactions. And we're also here to report that there are no matters that came to our attention that are unusual transactions. Accounting estimates and management's judgments, this, these are a big part of the financial statements, largely the government-wide financial statements. They include some very large estimates for items like depreciation, compensated absences, the net pension liability on the GASB 68 that was pushed down to the local governments, low SAP, and the big, um, the big elephant on the, the government-wide statements is the OPEP uh, liability. So management believes that these estimates used and assumptions made are adequate based on the information available. We've evaluated those and we agree. Financial statement disclosures. Um, what, what can I say about this? Financial statement disclosures are, um, are complicated, um, but they are presented in a clear and consistent manner in your financial statements. 
And I'm also happy to report that there were no significant uh, difficulties in dealing with management uh, during our audit. There were no disagreements with management during our audit. Uh, we uh, received a representation from management uh, required under the standards on February 8th to issue the financial statements. And another uh, thing that must be considered is that um, that if if we come across the the knowledge that that the client has um, consulted with other accountants regarding um, opinion shopping on matters, uh, we're required not to take the engagement, and uh, we're happy that there were no such consultations, and um, there were no matters discussed. Um, or responses there too that were a condition to our retention as auditors. We, um, as required under the standards, we affirm that we're independent as it relates to the village. And then there's a couple of disclosures in there related to corrected and uncorrected misstatements. There are no financial statement uh, items that are um, remain uncorrected. And there um, are no um, material misstatements identified during our audit that uh, individually or in the aggregate to the financial statements would make us alter our opinion. So we have a couple of um, internal control matters we'd like to go over. Can I turn it over to you, Jen, to take care of these? Sure. Um, so the first internal control matter that um, we're required to bring to your attention is there was a discrepancy in some of the accounting records for the bail account for the Justice Court. Um, we weren't aware of any indication that there was any fraud or anything like that, just that the accounting records don't agree to the bank reconciliation. And since they're not in agreement and we can't identify the differences, we can't be certain which are the more accurate uh, amounts. And because it's in um, a very small fund, the custodial fund, the amount was material to the financial statements. Uh, the rest are not material weaknesses or significant deficiencies, just um, areas where we thought there could be some improvements. And uh, the first is uh, cybersecurity awareness training. Uh, during the audit, we became aware that the village did not have a cybersecurity employee awareness training program, and we recommended that one be implemented. And to my knowledge, that's already been uh, put in place. So um, that should be uh, removed on next year's audit. There was a cybersecurity assessment we were recommended, which is that um, the village contract with an IT specialist to conduct a comprehensive cyber risk assessment to ensure that the village is secure. And I believe that's also been contracted at this point. Um, we noted a lack of segregation of duties uh, between uh, collection, deposit, and recording of cash receipts. In smaller entities, sometimes it's difficult to segregate all of those duties completely but the village has already um, shifted some responsibilities to put those se that segregation of duties in place. Um, we also noted that the village should not have a policy or procedure in place to require a second approval of all journal entries. Um, and again, we believe that's already in progress. Uh, we also became aware that uh, certain resident beach permits, which are free of charge for village residents, were being issued to individuals who did not qualify free of charge. Um, and that results in a potential of lost revenue for the village. And um, so we recommended that the village improve procedures surrounding the resident beach permit process to ensure that that doesn't happen on a go forward basis. And again, I believe the village is already in the process of implementing a new software, which would help to uh, better track those permits. And the last item was that we noted that there's a lot of cash that's collected at the beach. Um, and we just recommended that the village attempts to reduce the amount of cash that's collected, possibly by uh, accepting credit cards or putting other procedures in place to minimize cash, as obviously cash is the highest risk um, payment for transactions since it can easily be uh, misappropriated. Okay, so let me, let me also state, uh, thank, thanks, Jen. Let me also state that when we brought these attention uh, to, to the attention of management, these comments, um, it, it was it was like they they kind of were already on top of it. So that's um, as auditors, we're very encouraged that um, that the the finance department is is very proactive on these items, and 
um, they were either afoot or, um, or, or about to be. So we were encouraged by that. I, I did actually send to the board um, uh, the corrective uh, measures that we've already put, put in place in a memo to, uh, to the auditors in response to some of the findings. Um, what we're, we're, we're going to be talking about is um, implementing some procedures where there is um, daily um, reports. The village clerk will now be uh, given a, um, a report at the end of the, all the daily activity with a list of non-resident resident permits and um, to, to you know, spot audit and approve. Um, we've also uh, changed up uh, the, the flow of information, the flow of transaction for the receipt of cash and just segregated it that now um, the deposit and the uh, reporting of the receipts are done by the deputy treasurer and the accountant rather than just by the deputy treasurer. Um, and um, then we've also implemented a bank reconciliation process where um, I sign off on the bank reconciliations and review them which was in place for, for quite a while. We're, we're now adding that to the justice court. We've hired a, an outside accountant um, a couple of meetings ago, um, Richard Buxton, who is um, working on uh, looking at the reconciliations uh, at the justice court. And we believe what happened was that the um, software is not being updated with the bank reconciliation items. So many times during a monthly bank reconciliation, you'll find checks were returned um, and those will be listed on the bank reconciliation, but they weren't actually recorded in the tax, uh, the, in, in the accounting software, the, the, the court uh, software that they use, which is a state program. Um, so uh, we went back, uh, uh, Julie and I did a deep dive and went all the way back. We found out that um, there was discrepancies that reported back to 2012 um, in the amount of $7,000. And we think this has just grown through the years because these transactions and adjustments that were found during the bank reconciliation process were never recorded in the software. So um, we're getting um, software, uh, we're, we're getting the bank reconciliations you know, caught up. All those changes are identified. They're now sent to the justice court clerks um, on a monthly basis. And the accountant is ensuring that they are posted before he proceeds with the next monthly bank reconciliation so we can avoid these problems in the future. The other issue we have is cash at the bank, uh, at the beach. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of our part-time um, young folks that are working at the beach are collecting cash. I know a lot of the other municipalities have gone cashless with handheld credit card machines. Um, and uh, it's probably the, the direction we'll move in, but we'll have uh, discussion with the board when we um, have the resolution setting forth the policy for um, the beach collections this coming year. Yeah, let me thank you. Let me let me also state that we took a very close look at the uh, going back to the justice court. We looked at very closely the cash receipts and cash disbursements that happened during this this fiscal year, and we feel comfortable about those. So as um, Mrs. Cable Bad said, um, this is an error that goes back years and years. Um, it could be an administrative error. We, we don't feel like the, you know there's any cash missing or anything like that. Um, but you know we just think it's sloppy um, record keeping on the uh, updating the software. And, and this goes back to 2012. 2012. There was a $7,000 discrepancy in 2012 in the beginning of 20. 21, it was at 11,000. So it's been growing through the years. And apparently there were never checks and balances where um, the bank reconciliations were performed by the outside accountant at the time. And um, those changes were never recorded in, in, the, in the software to make sure that the book balance and the bank balance you know, were reconciled. Yeah, so let me also say that, you know, that there is a modified opinion or a qualified opinion on the on the justice court as it relates to the financial statements and it and it um you know it, it seems like you know a pretty serious thing um and and it's nothing to be um you know fluffed off i'm just saying that the, the discrepancy because of the opining unit which is the custodial fund which represents the bail in the justice court's accounts because that is a separate opining unit 
the materiality that we need to measure errors by are very low. And, and that's why um, we have a modified opinion as it relates to uh, the, the custodial. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I wanted to take this time, really appreciate your hard work. I know you've been uh, uh, been here quite a bit and uh, we're very happy with the, um, the audit that we have in front of us. There's a lot of good news here. Uh, and there's also some areas for improvement, which, as you mentioned, we're already taking. I have some comments that I'll make at the end, but I just wanted to open this up uh, to any comments or questions from any of the board members. Yeah, I, 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 I have one, one quick question, if I may. Um, the 27 million that um, you mentioned, is, is, is that a, a complete, um, is it an S, and, and um, is that, um, Buildings, land, all, all together. Is that just um? Can break, is, is there a breakdown of that? The assets. Is it is it land and uh? What, Twenty-seven uh, million. I'm, I'm sorry. Maybe maybe. I'm, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's that's in the capital right. asset. Right, right, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah the, that 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 comes that there's a breakout in the notes of the financial statement. It okay. is land. It is buildings. It is improvements. It is everything okay. that the town has capitalized um, over the years. Um, does that include like vehicles, fire trucks, or whatever? Yes. Or, okay. yes. All capital assets. Okay. Thank you. There is a note in 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 the section in the back section of the financials, uh, trustee. There's a there's a note section that actually gives you the breakdown and the depreciation on all those assets. Okay. Thank you for that. It's on page thirty one. Thanks. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Trustee McLaughlin. Are there any other questions or comments from board members? One quick thing, I don't want to take too much time on this that I was particularly interested in. You had mentioned that there are some changes in the, the GASB 91 uh, for the conduit debt obligations. Could you maybe quickly, uh, not too long, talk about, about what that means uh, for the village? It doesn't mean anything for the village. There's a good chance it won't even affect the village. It, it more has to do with IDAs, LDCs, and EDCs, where they have conduit debt on their balance sheet. You do not have conduit debt on your balance sheet. Yeah, so one, we had an issue uh, a, a bit of, a, a while ago where there was some interest in, uh, in using the Suffolk County IDA bonds for uh, uh, potentially to finance uh, uh, sewer infrastructure. Um, we, we, may, we may not go in that direction, but in case we do, will that impact anything as far as disclosures go or just curious what that? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't believe that, that that debt is going to be on your balance sheet. No, it wouldn't be. So I mean, Mayor, I could take a take a closer look at that when you have some particulars on that. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you very much again. I appreciate it. Um, again, uh, wanted to thank you for your time. I know you spent a lot of time looking at our uh, at our numbers. Uh, again, some some good news. Um, you know, one point zero five six million dollars of, uh, of of cash uh, surplus from our last budget. Um, though again, you know, as usual, we have to start looking at some of the OPEB and other type of long-term liabilities. And, um, you know, as the public knows, we just um, uh, resolved that we're going to be doing a, a study in the justice court. Um, makes a lot more sense now that we're, you know, seeing some of those discrepancies in the bail accounts from the uh, the justice court. So I think that makes that, that study even more, more important at this time. So appreciate, um, uh, appreciate that as well. So again, uh, and, and Charlie wanted to thank you for helping implement some of the policies and procedures as, as far as those internal controls go. So it's good to see that we're taking steps in a positive direction uh, to help, um, you know, make some positive changes to some of the issues that we've had uh, in the past. So again, um, I wanted to thank you and your team uh, for your time. And uh, I guess we can keep on, on moving here uh, in our meeting. So thank you, thank Mayor. You. And thank you, Village Trustees. And of course, thank you to Mrs. Kegel-Betts and Ms. Crudop uh, for their assistance uh, during the audit. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank yes. You Have a good night. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Jen. And Mr. thank Devoli. you, Julie. Mrs. Devoli, thank you for everything. All right. Again, Charlene, Julie, good, great job. Thank you very much for your hard work on this. I know it was a heavy lift. Um, that being said, no communications to the board, but there's one discussion item. That is the uh, solar trash can and EV charging station update uh, presented by our Deputy Mayor, Trustee Aresta. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, good news today. 
Uh, we passed all the tests uh, that uh, PSUG put us through as far as the EV charging stations are concerned. I was, I got a little excited last week when I went by and I saw the hoses hooked up and I thought we were on, but uh, we're just about there. So I know Ken is working on the signage uh, with Gary and uh, we're just waiting for the last uh, and the final hookup uh, for PSEG, which should take place in a couple of weeks. But, um, you know, we're, we're just about there, which is, which is great news. So, um, once you see the signs up, and that's when it'll be ready to go. Uh, the other thing is the EV, uh, I'm sorry, the solar uh, trash cans, uh, the big bellies. Uh, we, uh, Gary and I met uh, the other day with uh, Kevin, the representative from the company, and uh, we walked through Main Street and uh, we uh, went through where uh, these, um, the solar power bellies are going to be uh, placed. And so we're just finalizing that. And, but in the meantime, while we're doing that, because of, as with everything else that's being backdoored these days, um, it's not gonna take six weeks, it's gonna be longer than six weeks to get the bellies in. But uh, we gave them the okay to move ahead with the ordering uh, while we uh, get that map uh, finalized. So our first um, uh, area is going to be both sides of Main Street. And then after that, uh, after the first implementation, the second phase will go through later on in the summer. Uh, that would be down Job's Lane. So uh, that's what we're working on. And uh, we should see that before Memorial Day for sure. So thank you. Trustee Resta, thank you very much. So we'll keep our, meet, our, our meeting moving. Uh, we now have a public hearing, so I'm gonna make a motion uh, to open the public hearing regarding local law 3-2022, the proposal to amend village code section 119-2 fees to update the building department fees. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So Ken, I'll, I'll let you take it from here. I, I have a few questions and then we could open this up to any uh, public comment. Okay, Mayor, there's no hands up, only two people in the audience. All right, thank you, Ken. Okay, so so this is a, um, a request by the, uh, the mayor and the board of trustees to increase certain fees um, that are collected by the um, building department. Uh, the building department obviously um, has a lot of expenses related to it. They have to do inspections. They have to review plans. They have to send building inspectors out to um, sites during various portions of the um, process to for building so that they can eventually issue uh, COs. And uh, those costs, are very expensive. We have personnel issues. And um, the, I believe there was a review by the building department that their expenses were not being fully covered by the fee that were being uh, implemented to the applicant. So uh, I, I think this is an issue of simply looking to capture the expenses for building applications. And um, that's where we are. Mr. Mayor, do you have any comments or issues on that? You, um, a few questions, but just wanted to open this up to uh, members of the board, if they have any questions or comments. If not, we can keep on moving. I know we already had uh, this is the second series of our public hearing uh, as we adjourned it at our last meeting. And I'm good with it. Okay, I'm very good. Good. I'm, I'm good with it. Can the only question uh, I had is for we have some of the new buildings or additions, and just wanted to confirm I'm looking at the language here, and it said for an estimated construction cost not exceeding estimated cost of 100,000, 1.25 percent of the estimated cost of the construction materials, but not less than 250 dollars, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I want to make make sure that the language is consistent with the kind of a sliding scale. Um, my understanding is uh, 
that this has been vetted through the building department. And yes, it is a sliding scale so that the, the smaller projects um, don't feel the harm, so to speak. The, the smaller projects will require less administration by the village and the village building department. So that, that's the reasoning and rationale behind the lower um, percentage fee for them. And then obviously larger projects are gonna require um, more review, more investigation, more um, uh, responses and to, to, to the larger projects. So I think, I think the I think the sliding scale that's been introduced is consistent with the amount of time and effort that village trust uh, village personnel will require to look at these projects. Um, so to make sure that they're in compliance with local and state building codes. All right, very good. Thank you, Ken. And again, just wanted to reiterate that this was done in collaboration and discussion with our uh, senior building inspector. And also, again, as our attorney, Ken Gray said, you know, reflective of the increase uh, of costs it, it will incur just in the regular day-to-day -day operations of our building uh, department, as well as, um, you know, the constant need for inspections. And so I think this would be a good, uh, a good uh, local law to pass. And then it was also done by looking at other municipalities. We looked at the village of Sagaponic. We looked at the village of Bellport. We really looked uh, across a number of uh, villages across uh, Suffolk County. And um, it seems to be relatively consistent with that. And um, as Bill Manger, the uh, chair of a steering committee mentioned that this hasn't been done in uh, over a decade and a half or so. So it uh, was certainly time. Um, so that being said, uh, I'd like to make a motion to uh, close the, uh, the public hearing. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Trustee McLaughlin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we can keep on moving. Charlene, I'll defer this to you as we move to the suggested uh, resolutions portion of our meeting tonight. Forgot to unmute. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, resolution number one resolved that the claims for the warrant dated February 22nd. 2022, totaling $364,492.69, warrant A13 general fund, and $400 warrant CS4, CS fund trust, trust fund, be audited and approved. Motion? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution number two, resolved that the reading of the minutes for the public sessions of February 8th and February 10th, 2022 shall be dispensed with and those minutes shall be accepted by the village clerk and the actions taken at that meeting shall be ratified and approved. We have a motion. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution number three, resolved that the Board of Trustees accepts the resignation of Southampton Village Fire Department Hose Company Number 1 member, former Chief Frederick Camp II, with 50.86 years of service and is now exempt. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution number four, resolved that the Board of Trustees accepts the resignation of Southampton Village Fire Department Hose Company number one member, former Captain Richard Gaminsky, with 51.69 years of service, and he is now exempt. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Resolution number five, resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Incorporated Village of Southampton hereby approves local law 3-6. Uh, 2022, the proposal to amend village code section 119-2 fees and to update uh, building department fees. Uh, is there a motion? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Resolve num uh, res resolution number six, resolve that the Board of Trustees authorized, authorizes the mayor to execute a one-year extension of the contract for the village to provide fire protection with the village Southampton Fire District for an annual fee of $1,240,206, which will expire on December 31st, 2022. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Second. All in quick discussion. I, I just one question. Are, are, are we still working on a, a more permanent long term, or is it? Are we just uh, where where is the status of that? Are we are we going to um? Are are we still in negotiations, or what's the status there with, with that? If I could answer that, the con the, the previous contract expired in at the end of the last year, and we've been operating sort of in a, without a contract, and so this gives us right. breathing space to negotiate a new a new arrangement uh, with a particular focus on how the district helps fund the village's purchase of new capital equipment, which is not specified clearly in the existing agreement, but we needed to establish okay. this agreement just to give us breathing space to create, to negotiate the new agreement. Thank you, Trustee Stevenson. So I, I have a, a quick, um, kind of discussion I wanted to kind of uh, speak to the board about. Uh, so first, you know, I wanted to just preface by saying um, that it has been really a privilege and an honor to get to know, you know, many of the men and women um, of our Southampton Village Volunteer Fire Department. Uh, these are individuals who will show up at your home at two o'clock in the morning. Uh, they will uh, put themselves in harm's way. And uh, I have a tremendous amount of respect for all the men and women of our fire department. Um, and I applaud them for all of their service uh, to the village. Uh, this is not a job for everybody, but this is for people who uh, step up and, and again, put themselves in harm's way in order to help the community. So we are uh, indebted to them and uh, it is an honor to uh, be able to work with them. And uh, I've had, again, the honor or privilege to get to know some members of the fire department, as well as our chiefs, uh, particularly uh, Chief uh, you know, Alfie Callahan and uh, Manny and, and uh, Polis and everybody. So it's been been great. Now. I wanted to say that um, I'm, I'm okay extending this for, for one more year, uh, but I would like to essentially make sure that we have an agreement that looks out for our South Indian Village Fire Department to make sure that they are appropriately compensated so that they have the best equipment uh, and materials and resources that they need to run the best possible fire department, which we have a longstanding tradition. I also wanna make sure it's fair to our residents and taxpayers um, we're in budget season right now, and we need a contract that appropriately compensates the village. And uh, I also want to make sure that uh, town residents, uh, which this district covers that we service, which includes Shinnecock, Tuckahoe, as well as parts of Watermill, are also um, aware of what is going on. And uh, my particular issue um, where we stand right now is that uh, in the early to mid uh, 2000s, uh, there was this fire district that was created. Uh, for those in the public who are not aware, the fire district is a separate municipality. It has its own tax line, and they levy a tax onto the district each year, uh, and they collect approximately $2 million or so of taxes every single year. But as, as you see from this resolution, uh, the village is only getting $1.2 million or so dollars to service the fire department. Now, if you look at any analysis that we've done, it costs us much more than $1.2 million to service the district. And we also did not get any contributions for equipment from the fire district. Now I had a conversation with Chief Callahan uh, before uh, this meeting uh, to let him know that I was gonna say a few remarks so that there are no uh, surprises on our uh, volunteer fire department end. But I would like for this board uh, to work together um, with the fire district and with our fire department to make sure that this contract um, appropriately um, compensates uh, the village residents and taxpayers, as well as puts together a mechanism for more funding for our fire department. Again, um, since I've been mayor, we've purchased two, well, soon to be three uh, fire trucks. We've purchased uh, one for 1.2 million. We've purchased a smaller vehicle for upwards of $600,000. And we're uh, going to be purchasing a new police fire truck for about $500,000. This is expensive equipment. We want the best of the best for our fire department, but we need a contract uh, for the district, which we also, by the way, dispatch for, uh, to again, represent um, an appropriate uh, compensation amount. So we'll be working as a board uh, to make sure that this is um, 
the right contract. But but I can tell everybody uh, now uh, that for whatever reason, over the last 15 years, uh, there wasn't a contract that was put in place that, in my opinion, appropriately compensates the fire department or the village. Uh, and so we've got a lot of hard work to do to make sure that we have a better contract uh, moving forward. Uh, this is the first contract that this board um, you know, will have to negotiate. It's why it's uh, only one year. Uh, and we're going to have to um, you know, work again side by side with everyone to make sure that we have a better uh, contract in place. Uh, otherwise, uh, the village will have to continue to uh, subsidize uh, the fire district and uh, the residents of the fire district will be paying taxes uh, that are not actually being used uh, to pay for the services uh, of the village. So um, with that being said, I'm not sure if there's any other comments, but that's those, those are the comments that I wanted to uh, put on the, uh, the record here tonight. And again, we, um, we wanna make sure we work hand in hand with our outstanding members of our South Hamlet Village Fire Department to make sure we have the best possible contract. Okay, that being said, all in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Resolution number seven, resolved that the Board of Trustees accepts the fiscal year end May 31st, 2021 audited financial statements as submitted from the auditors, PFK O'Connor Davies, LLP. Uh, do we have a motion? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution number eight, whereas the village has received county E911 funding in excess of the amount budgeted by over $20,000, and Acting Chief Hurtow has requested that $5,000 be appropriated for the purchase of equipment needed for the dispatch unit. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Board of Trustees approves the attached budget amendment number 226, increasing police equipment by A3120.2 in the amount of $5,000 for the purchase of this equipment. Uh, is there a motion? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution number nine, whereas the State Comptroller's Office audited Fellowship Service Credit Award Program for the Southampton Village Fire Department in 2016 and issued a report stating that they were not properly awarding service credits. And whereas this plan was never adopted by the board, yet the fire department was under the impression that the board formally adopted this policy and has been complying with the new service award program since 2018. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees retroactively adopt this policy, which will then be submitted to the State Comptroller's Office as a matter of record, effective January 16th, 2018. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Second. Um, just a small, a short discussion. Um, we. Uh, uh, I was uh, actually on the state controller's website and I noticed that the village had been audited, uh, their LOSAP award program had been audited uh, for the purpose of determining if they were appropriately awarding service credits. And um, there was never a corrective action plan filed with the, the state controller's office. And on further review, um, I did find that um, the fire department had taken corrective action, had implemented the updated policy and taken all the corrective measures that were recommended by the state controller and were under the impression that the village board had adopted the policy in 2018 when they enacted it. So as a formality, um, they had corrected, you know, almost immediately any of the issues that they had and they have been playing by the, by the state controller's office rule book and uh, the board just needs to go through this process to formally adopt, um, uh, ratify uh, the policy that they've implemented. So uh, any other, qu any questions? Thank you, Charlene. Okay, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, resolution number 10, resolved that the board of trustees approves Love Michael and U.S. Autism Homes to hold the Doggy Dash for Autism on Saturday, April 2nd, 2022, from 10.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. with its start and finish at Agawam Park. Uh, do we have a motion? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Resolution number 11, resolved that the Board of Trustees hereby approved that with respect to the 22 village election and in accordance with Village Code Chapter 6-1, the election will, will be held on Friday, June 17th, 2022. The polling place will be located at the Levitas Center, Southampton Cultural Center, located at 25 Pond Lane. The polls will open from the time frame from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. The following offices will be filled for Justice uh, Village Trustee two positions for the term of both positions is two years. Current incumbent Gina S. Arresta and current incumbent Joseph R. McLaughlin is now amended to read, resolved that the Board of Trustees hereby approves with respect to the 2022 village general election and in accordance with the village general code, the election shall be held Friday, June 17, 2022. The polling place will be located at the Levitas Center, Southampton Cultural Center at 25 Pond Lane, Southampton, New York. Polls will be open from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. The following offices will be filled for village trustee, two positions. The term of office for both positions is two years. Com current incumbent Gina Aresta and current incumbent Joseph McLaughlin. The following office will also be filled for justice, village justice court, one position for the term of office is four years and the current incumbent is Honorable Barbara Wilson. Do we have a motion? Motion. Second. Second. All Second. in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, uh, Mayor, we do have a supplemental resolution that has two that was provided to the board with two resolutions, and there is one additional request from Trustee Robin Brown to add um, a third. Um, so, can I have a motion to add the supplemental agenda? Motion to add the supplemental agenda. A second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, resolution number one. Uh, resolution one, uh, whereas the village of Southampton has received an application submitted by Heart of the Hamptons to operate a food pantry at 44 Meeting House Lane, Southampton, New York, as a special exemption use. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees hereby sets a public hearing for Tuesday, March 29th, uh, 2022 at 5 p.m. Uh, do we have a motion? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution number two, whereas the village of Southampton has received a grievance by the PROBA, Radio Operators Union, uh, regarding holiday pay, uh, which was denied. And whereas PROBA has appealed the denial to the village board, citing Article 4 of the Collective Bargaining uh, Agreement, now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Trustees sets a grievance hearing for March 10th, 2022. The village, attorney, the village uh, administrator will send a notice of, of uh, hearing to the PROBA officials. Um, do we have a motion? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Okay, resolution number three. Charlene, Where Charlene, I'm sorry to jump in. I just want to clarify, is that going to be at 6 p.m.? Um, actually, it's um, it, it will be part of the meeting, yes. Okay. Uh, so right. the, I believe that the, the grievance, uh, there is a, a, a notification in the contract that allows for appearance and they have to give us 10 days notice if they are going to appear. Otherwise the board will be provided with summary, uh, with summations of both sides of the grievance and the board will make a determination and discuss at that meeting. Fair enough. I, ju I just didn't know if it was a special meeting or if we're gonna do it during the regular. It's regular during the regular meeting, but the, informa the information will be, you know, we'll know ahead of time, you know, <clears throat> we'll have all the uh, the documents and inform information submitted to the board in, in ahead, ahead of time and they'll just discuss whatever they're their uh, decision will be. Okay, thank you. And March 29th is not a regular scheduled meeting. March 29th is a special meeting and that is for the local, for the, uh, the special- Oh, you're talking about low staff, I'm sorry. Okay, I mean the PROBA. The, uh, the PROBA okay, is gonna be during a regular board meeting, yes. Right. Yes. Um, all right, resolution number three, whereas since December 21st, the village of Southampton has developed a partnership with We Connect the Dots, Upskill New York, Bonnie Cannon of BHRC, BHCCRC and Jada Grant, a young professional sponsored by BHCCRC. And whereas Village Hall would like to continue to cultivate this initiative, now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Trustees appoints Jada Gant 
to the position of office assistant part-time at an hourly rate of $18 per hour, three days a week, effective February 28th, 2022. Do we have um, a motion? Motion. Second? Second. Trustee, uh, would you like to say anything about this program since this was something that's near and dear to your heart? <laughs> Well, I, I'm kind of excited about it, and I'm sure the mayor is as well, because he was um, very happy to hear that we would be partnering with this young lady, and she has shown herself, as I hear, exemplary, and a credit to uh, her program and an example to others. So we are quite excited as far as nurturing this and the benefits of what she's giving um, with her work for the village. So um, I think we all as trustees are grateful for being able to be part of this nurturing employment with her. And thank you. Thank you, Trustee Brown. Okay, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. That concludes the resolution portion. Okay, excellent. So we'll now move forward to comments from board members and we'll open this up in alphabetical order with Trustee Brown. I'm sorry, Trustee Aresta. I was just thinking of Trustee Brown. <laughs> okay, thank you. I was so I I really said what I wanted to say tonight. Just give the update with the uh, the delis and uh, uh, also the evening charging stations and uh, there's a couple of other things that Gary and I have cooking to uh, keep our village uh, beautiful and uh, some plans for the spring. And I will. Um, keep everybody updated as that, that, um, that got moved along. So just have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Resta. Next is Trustee Brown. Uh, I think I've said it all and uh, wishing everyone a pleasant February. Uh, I'm sure they enjoy the Valentine's Day and their heart awareness uh, month and the village is all aglow in red in support of heart health. And thank everyone. Good evening. Thank you, Trustee Brown. Trustee McLaughlin. Thank you. I just wanted to mention a few quick things. Just wanted to say thank you to Mr. Kaminsky and Mr. Kemp for their years of service. 50 years is a long time for to involve with, with any any um, organization, especially a volunteer. So my again, big thank you to them and their years of service. And I hope they enjoy their retirement. Um also I also wanted to um say um Thank you to yet again DPW, who is um, continually out there, salting the roads, and because we've, we've had some uh, snow squalls the last few weeks, and I wanted this in addition to the uh, previous snowstorm. So they've done they've done a great job out there salting and taking care of the roads as they as they have been. So I just wanted to mention those two quick things, and uh, hopefully everyone has a good uh, good week, and uh, see you next month. Thank you, Trustee McLaughlin, uh, Trustee Stevenson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I would just like to say how pleased I was to hear the auditor's report uh, and the very positive statements they made regarding the, um, the not only the results, uh, expenses below budget, revenue above budget, but also the, the financial controls and the um, attention to detail and the management prowess that uh, the village executed in achieving these results. And the few points that they raised uh, of concern, it was also gratifying to hear the auditors say that uh, in their opinion, that we are already making progress in addressing those issues. Of course, it's the nature of the beast that when one year ends, the next year starts. And we're currently obviously at work in this coming year's budget. I have met uh, along with uh, you, Mr. Mayor and, and, and Administrator Kegel Betts uh, with the uh, fire department, with the building department and with the emergency services department. And I was just very impressed in those meetings with the grasp of detail, the attention to uh, fiscal responsibility that all of the leaders of those departments, Alfie Callahan, Shane Finocchiario, and Tian Ho So showed in the, the crafting of their uh, proposed budgets for the coming year. So I just wanna say thanks to everybody who achieved those results and who hopefully will achieve these results going forward. I think the village is in good hands with their leadership. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Stevenson. Uh, wanted to thank you as well for digging into the uh, 
the numbers during the budget cycle. And I wanted to echo those comments, but um, first wanted to thank our uh, village administrator and treasurer, Charlene Cagle Betts, as well as Julie, uh, who's came on board here. And what we saw tonight was a result of a lot of hard work um, by our board of trustees and particularly by our treasurer and accounting uh, division, as well as our deputy uh, treasurer. And this was essentially all this work happened behind the scenes. Uh, when you think of what a board of trustees is responsible for, it's legislation, but also mo most importantly, managing the budget and the purse strings of the village. So this is not what appears obviously on the front page of the paper all the time, uh, but it is uh, what we'll be leaving uh, future boards with by uh, having this uh, increased attention to detail, policies and procedures in place and uh, new auditors uh, amongst other initiatives that are taking place in order to strengthen the village's uh, financial position. So again, wanted to thank everybody involved, uh, our, thank our board, thank our uh, treasury team, thank our auditors, uh, pleasure to hear that report. But of course, there's there's some more work to do. Um, I just wanted to uh, thank uh, Trustee Brown and um, you know membership and leadership of the Bridgehampton Child Care Center, as well as uh, our clerk uh, Kathy Sweeney, who's uh, helped uh, tremendously with this program uh, to bring this to life. And it's a, a pleasure to uh, work with um, uh, young professionals in order to bring them into uh, public service and uh, local government, so that they can gain experience uh, in the future and help bring that. Uh, to other municipalities and other jobs down the road. So the thing that I wanted to, and then also wanted to recognize, we have the uh, Love Michael event at Agawam Park, uh, April 2nd, 2022. Love Michael is an outstanding event uh, that helps uh, benefits uh, individuals uh, with um, uh, various uh, disabilities. And um, they do a lot of work, great work at the, uh, the Greek church. And uh, it's been great to get to know uh, some of the uh, young people there. And uh, we're happy to uh, support uh, the organization, and I would encourage everybody uh, to attend. Uh, I was uh, lucky enough to go through the uh, drive-through parade uh, last week. Uh, that was a great event, and uh, our fire department, uh, of course, was there helping that. Uh, the thing that I'll close with is that while we have some uh, good news regarding the audit uh, and our financials, uh, we need to continue to work uh, hard uh, to make sure that we have a successful budget moving forward. Um, as I mentioned in uh, prior meetings, uh, given uh, various um, inflationary items, as well as the rising cost of health insurance, uh, it's going to be uh, harder and harder uh, to uh, provide um, tax uh, cuts, uh, property tax cuts to our village residents. Um, there's a lot of things that I'm proud of, a lot of things that we're proud of. Uh, one of the things that I was most proud of uh, just this past year is that uh, this board uh, helped us uh, put together the first uh, tax rate uh, cut in 20 years and uh, the first tax levy cut in any memory that anyone could possibly even uh, record. Now, as I said, cutting the tax levy is a once, once in a while type, uh, type thing. We're going to have to work very, very hard um, if we would like to achieve a cut in the tax rate. I don't know if that's possible. Again, we had 20 years in a row where uh, the Village Board of Trustees increased the tax rate, uh, but I would urge our Board of Trustees uh, to uh, help us make some of those hard decisions that are going to be necessary if we would like to deliver uh, another um, uh, reduction in the tax rate and assessed value to our village residents. I'm happy to go over uh, those hard decisions. Um, again, they're called hard decisions because uh, they're going to be, uh, they're not going to be easy to make. And uh, I can lay out what those are going to be. Um, and I'd be happy to meet one-on-one -on -one with everybody to, uh, to discuss those further. But if we don't make those hard decisions, uh, we will not be able to deliver uh, this, uh, this reduction in, in our property tax rate. We do have our public hearing, the first one coming up in March. Uh, we, we can have others if needed. But uh, um, on that topic, I also just wanted to thank um, our Budget and Finance Committee for their, um, their hard work uh, throughout the process and for each of our trustees for uh, rolling up their sleeves and helping out with this budgetary process. So uh, with that being said, uh, I'll conclude my remarks and I will make a motion uh, to uh, adjourn uh, our meeting. So is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Hey, uh, we have a very quick, uh, do we have, I'm sorry, uh, Mayor, do we have a uh, exec session item, Ken? Yeah, yeah. I, I, Mayor and Charlene, I thought we had an exec session. Yeah, we have, it's a very, it's a very brief one. Concerning um, pending litigation. Yes. I'm not aware of any 
any uh, items in executive session, but really it's up to the, the board I about what they'd like to do. Um, I know we just adjourned the meeting. Ken, is there? Well, my, my understanding was there was an executive session issue and we have outside counsel on the line who is gonna update you on some litigation issue. If you, if you don't yeah. want to do it for this meeting, we can do it for another meeting. Really up to the board. You have a hand up, Mayor Scott Kreppen. That's yeah. outside council. It should be very brief. It should be very brief. You're, you're, you're still streaming, so let me know what to do. We would like to go forward into the executive session. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Okay, so you have to revoke the closing of the meeting and no, no, you're not, you're not, you don't close the meeting. You, what you're doing is making a motion to go into executive session, to talk about pending litigation concerning the beat. I mean, he closed the meeting; has to be reopened. Am I right? I guess not. I don't know. Yeah, you've you've seen quite a few meetings these days. What's that? I said Kat has seen quite a few meetings these days. Yes, sir. So I think you can just make a motion to, to adjourn into exec session. Are you making the motion? If anyone would like to make that motion, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable. I'll make the motion to right, adjourn to executive session. I'll second, second that. Is there a second? second Thank that. you. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, I'll make the motion to return, return to uh, open session. Is there a second? Second. All, All in favor? In favor. Aye. 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 I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.